Welcome to the Agility in Real Life podcast, Take 5 in Real Life. Now your hosts, my Studeman and Jeff Lee. Hello and welcome back to the Agility IRL podcast, Take 5 IRL. I am one of your hosts, Jeff Lee. And I'm the other one, Mike Studeman. How are you doing today, Jeff? Uh, not too bad, Mike. It's a nice Friday, pre-holiday afternoon. Um, hopefully we get this thing launched next week. So that's the comment still makes sense, but, uh, things are going very well on this side yourself. Doing well, doing well. Say I've been, uh, been wrestling with a question here. Uh, does size matter? I, I mean, team size, team size, I mean, does team size matter? Uh, thanks for the clarification there. I thought this podcast was going to go in a different direction than uh, what we had talked about. But uh, Walking yes, on dangerous uh, my... ground, Jeff. Walking on dangerous ground. <laughs> Team size does matter. Uh, and it, it came up recently with uh, a client that we've been working with. It comes up all the time with clients that we're working with. Um, worked in the past with a, with a team that had 21 people on the team uh, when we came in to start working with them. And they said, hey, we have a team that's too big. I said, yes, you do. I said, hey, we need to divide this team up. Yes, you do. Um, you know, and and get, but getting them to go from this point of our team's too big to actually doing it was very difficult for them. Uh, really had to focus on why. Why do you want to have a team that's smaller? Uh, so, and Mike, what are your reasons, some of the reasons that you think about it, why we need smaller teams? Well, I mean, I think, you know, you look at some of the research that's out there and you're you're more experienced in this research than I am. But I think, you know, smaller teams allows people to better know each other and to be a good team. You have to know each other, uh, it, you know, not just know each other's names and roles, but really know each other's strengths, skill sets, preferred communication styles, how you respond to conflict, those types of things. So I think small teams uh, drive that. I, I think the other big thing with a small team is a function of our human brain. We simply cannot keep track of all the accountability in a large team. So having those small teams allows us to, to uh, keep track of accountability. I like to say it, it doesn't allow many places to hide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with uh, with all of that. I'll add in there, you know, we, we need a team that's big enough so we have all the skills on the team to get the job done, right? So we can't go so small that we create more dependencies. So that's one thing to look at when you're shrinking a team is, is how do we still avoid being dependent on other teams because we've lost some critical skill sets. You want to keep the, the right skills within the team. The other thing I think about is the points of communication. And as a reminder, Scrum, we have self-managing teams. So you're planning together, right? It's it's a group coming up with a plan. It's all the, the developers. Uh, again, that word doesn't just mean people who write code. But anyone who's developing the product, testing, you know, do whatever you're doing. Um, and for a group to plan together, you need to be relatively small. If you think about planning for a vacation with a group of your friends, mm -hmm. if you have four or five friends who are planning this vacation together, you can go to a happy hour and sketch it out. And you're going to probably be pretty effective in framing it up in that happy hour. If you have a group of 21 friends, it's not going to be the same. Uh, you're going to have to delegate. People are going to have to take lead on different things. You're not a self-managing team. You're more of a command and control or hub and spoke kind of model. Absolutely. I mean, I think uh, one other thing to keep in mind is uh, the social loafing aspect of this, right? Um, and Jeff, you're better at this guy's name than I am. But what's the who's the guy that did the study with the tug of war? Uh, Maximilian Ringelman which is a, a, a five-star name, if I do say so myself. Absolutely. Do you want to share with the listeners what Riggleman's research found? Yeah, so he was a French scientist from the early 1900s, and he did some studies of people pulling on a rope. So whether that's a pulley system or a game of tug of war, uh, what he found is if you have just a few people on a team, less than five, everyone is pulling at their full capability. But as you get more than five, people don't pull to their full strength. Um, and the more above five you get, the less they pull. And so this whole idea, of there's less accountability. They feel less personally responsible for the result. That's where the phrase social loafing came in. That's the phrase he used for that. Um, you hide and, and you don't feel like you're really responsible for the result. Yeah, I always think it's just a good day when we can use the name Maximilian Riggleman. Absolutely a good day. 
Yeah, the other the other piece uh, that I'd point out here too is, and this this goes with kind of our motto of of being practical agilists, is you know Scrum has its rule, you know Scrum team should be less than ten. You have Riggleman's research around five. Have I served teams that have been slightly bigger than ten? Yes, but you quickly get into some of those issues that we've been talking about. So my advice to the listeners was, don't be too militant about it. If you got to have a team of eleven. I don't think the scrum police are going to come and arrest you. You will not get arrested, um, at least not for that. So, yeah, so there you go. Uh, scrum team size does matter. Maybe uh, I'm going to cue this up for us for a future episode to talk about some methods to go around reducing team size and how do you go about that uh, in with self-management in mind, something for us to talk about in the future. But until then, thanks for joining us. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. The product vision for Take 5 in Real Life is to provide members of the Agile community with an idea that they can incorporate into their daily lives to make them more effective. We thank you for listening and we'll see you next time.